Hey, this is Tom, and this is Tom's Rear Room Show. I'm down in my workshop, and uh, I got that antenna that I was describing in the previous show, the in-fed antenna. It's hooked up. Not ideally, I don't have the right cables or adapters, as usual, but I got it hooked up. And I'm going to show you, I, it's about noon time here in Florida so reception is not going to be very good so I'm going to use this MFJ analyzer that I've decided to keep and I'm so I'm going to buy it I like it so well and here's the setup I got right here let me um, zoom in a little bit I've got the analyzer and then I've got a four position switch antenna switch so I can actually hook up four antennas so I've got the infed antenna hooked up on number four I've got my homebrew long wire antenna it has no matching device whatsoever on three and I've got a temporary ground here like I say this is not the greatest setup I've got have using a couple of adapters on uh, both ends going to the meter because the on the infed adapter the little box little matching box is a BNC connector. Well, I don't have any BNC cables that are long enough. I need about 25 feet. I don't have any of those. So what I did is on that end, I added, let me sit down here for a second, get my go-kart here to go. I added on the other end, up at the antenna, I added an adapter from BNC to F-type. And I'm using F-type cable. Um, Again, it's not the right impedance. It's probably 75 ohms, but we're only receiving here. So impedance match doesn't have to be perfect. The better it is, the better the reception. But you won't notice it as much on receive as you would on transfer. Okay, so that's what I've got on that end, the antenna end. And I put the antenna... If you go back to my show where I tested the long wire antenna uh, from DRC, I took it down and I put this one in its place. So it's strung out in my front yard in my old homebrew long wire antenna is strung up in my backyard. They are facing different direction, directions as I mentioned before. So got a lot of apples and oranges here. Um, then when I came down with the coax, I had to convert it using two adapters to go from F-type to BNC to PL259 so I could connect it to this switch. So it's kind of a mix, match, mess, whatever, but what the heck, that's what it's all about. So. I'm going to try to show you, using the meter, the analyzer, what these two antennas are doing. So I'm going to move the camera now and point at my computer screen because I've got the output of the analyzer going to my computer, which is real-time sampling the antenna. And again, what it's doing is it's putting a little bit of a transmission power into the antenna, seeing the S, checking the SWR in this case. So let me see if I can move the camera without oh, dropping it. I just ran into a wall. Okay, we're gonna go down, crank this thing down. I really need a camera, man. Just not very good at doing both. Okay, now 
we're going to move the tripod. It's amazing how much room a tripod takes up. And we'll get back here behind the camera again and see if we can find my screen. Here it is there. Kind of center it. And we'll zoom in. Okay, I don't know how well this is showing up. And possibly if I turn some lights off, it'll show up better. Hopefully I won't trip. Okay, let me look at my viewfinder here. And come on, flip over. That's pretty good. I could zoom in a little more. And we'll go down a little more. Whoops, down. <coughs> Over a little more. 15 minutes worth of adjustment of the camera. And... Yeah, there. What the heck? Maybe that's good. Maybe that's good enough. Okay. So, it's the analyzer. Come on. can get my card going here. Okay. The analyzer is sweeping between 3 megahertz and 30 megahertz. And it's measuring SWR. And let me change the data points to 100. Maybe I can get a little better numbers on the bottom scale. Okay, so let's just look at um, some points here, some low points. Here's a low point right here. This is at 15 <coughs> point, call it point 0.3, the SWR is 1.4, and if we go, let's go find 10, see how it's doing on 10 megahertz, uh, it's about there, whoops, about there, um, the SWR is 2.1, now the SWR is not particularly indicative of received performance. It's more related to transmitting. Because you want to, when you're transmitting, you want that SWR to be down as close to 1.1 as possible. Okay, let's try, let's see down 5 megahertz thereabouts. Okay, there's about 4.91, and it's the SWR is 2.1. Four, excuse me, 2. Point, yeah, it's moving around a little bit. 2.4. So, there are a couple of uh, low points here. Let me go back, see what that low point is. At 4.3 megahertz, the SWR is 1.9. So it looks pretty good. Again, this is antenna is for receiving. There's another low point at 21.56. Okay, now I'm going to turn the analyzer off. Okay, the analyzer's off. Now I'm going to switch antennas. I should have wrote some numbers down on the other one. Um, yeah, I didn't know one. Okay, now we're going to turn the analyzer back on. And then we have to select PC mode. And... There we go. Now look at this. This is this is my uh, little long wire antenna. It's just a 40 feet of wire and uh, some coax lead-in. That's all it is. But notice the uh, the peaks are uh, a lot smaller unless the scale change. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, let's go down and see what a low point is. Here's a low point. At 5.4, I'm going to write these numbers down. I've got a piece. This time I'm going to write them down. Just, this is not what you call scientific investigation. It's just experimentation. Okay, so the frequency and the SWR and uh, for uh, antenna 1, and the SWR for antenna 2 
We're calling this antenna one. So we got a low point at. Let's, uh, no, let's look at frequencies, not just the low points. Okay, we're going to look at as close as we can 5 megahertz. It's actually 4.911, and the SWR is 3.78. So now we'll go to this low point, which is 5.457, and the SWR is 1.70. And then we'll jump up to this point right here. That's at 7.368. And the SWR is 15. And then we'll come down here. That's 9.552. And the SWR is 3.16. And here's a low point. At 10 point, whoops, I just kicked the can at 10.371, and the SWR is 1.19. And then we'll come up here at this peak, which is 14.1439, 14 and the SWR is 12.05. Come down here. Uh, let's see, come down down here, for instance, at 18 megahertz, 18.015, it's 4.62, and here's a low point at 19.926, and it's 2.41. And another, we'll pick up this other low point here. It's about 25.659, and it's 2.45. Okay. Um, let's just, for the heck of it, we'll look at impedance. Oh, it's interesting. Look at that. And... We're looking for it to be about 50 ohms, and that's 6.2 ohms. There's about 57 ohms at, okay, let me draw a line here, at 5.2. Four, five, seven. It's oops, I kicked it. No, I didn't. It jumped up. It's 74 ohms. And right there, it's almost 10 megahertz, 10.098. It's 24.76 ohms. And you can see it jumped way up there. I'm going to uh, I'm going to save this. Save, and this is my antenna on a four position switch, and this is, instead of SWR, this is impedance, I-M-P-E-D. So we're going to save that. That's the beauty of this. You can save these, and then you can go back and look at them later. So now I'm going to switch it. Let's see, reactance, return loss, I don't, yeah. Now I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to switch the antenna, and then I'm going to turn it back on, and we'll select PC mode again, and it should update here in a few seconds. I say it should update. Oh, I got to hit start because I did a save. That's why. Okay. Hmm, very different. Look at that. That is very, very different. Much better as far as low impedance. Um, look, we're way down here in the mud here. That looks a lot better. Nice flat. Just, just two peaks. One right about there is 900 ohms. 
And then we go way down here. Look at this. This is 5.9 ohms at 12 megahertz. Quite a bit different looking waveform. Now let's go back to SWR. Now we're going to write some numbers down and compare it to what we got off the other one. Now my memory is not very good, but that waveform looks different than the last time a few minutes ago when I checked this antenna. But anyway, let's go down to 4.9. Where is 4 point? 4.9 something. 9. 4.9. There it is. 4.911. And now we're getting 18. Quite a bit higher. We had 3.7 on my antenna. We go to 5.4. 5.4. 75 and it's 27 compared to my 1.7. Now we go to 7.3. Oops, went past it. 7.368. That's what we want. And it's 24 at 4.8. And the next reading I have is 9. 0.552. There it is, right. Oops, right there. 9552 is 2.34 compared to my 3.16. And then the next one is 1037. Oops. Oh, right there, 10.371, it's 4.35, and then we'll go to 14.739, is 2.85, compared to my 12, we'll go to 18, Eighteen point oh five is eleven point two zero compared to my four point six on my antenna. And we'll go to nineteen forty six or maybe nineteen twenty six. Nineteen twenty six is yes, twenty compared to my two, and we'll go to twenty five point six five. There it is, 17.50 compared to my 2.45. Quite a bit of difference if you if you based the reception quality of the antennas strictly on there is this reception strictly on SWR, you would say that overall my long wire antenna is doing a better job, but they're different SWRs at different frequencies. So the waveform looks considerably different between the two antennas. Now, like I said, I'm not doing any reception testing right this moment because it's noontime here in Florida and reception is just not going to be that good. So. For what it's worth, there is my test results using the MFJ266, or is it 226? I don't remember. But the, oh, 226, yes, 226 antenna analyzer. I love this thing. I could say I'm going to go ahead and buy it from MFJ because I really like it and I want to keep it. Um, I especially love this PC interface. The one problem, I, I went into shock this morning when I first took this up because my computer could not see the analyzer and vice versa. They wouldn't connect. And I'm pulling my hair out. I'm like, well, maybe I broke the cable or something and been a pin or something, so I changed cables. Still, would not see the analyzer. I just, and I, so I reinstalled the driver that comes with the software. Still didn't see it. Finally, I said, okay, 
I'm going to go back and do a restore on this computer back to a previous time when the analyzer was working. Boom. Fixed it. What happened between that time and now? Windows did an update. Somehow screwed up the configuration. So it's working now. The panic is over and I'm happy. So that's the show for today. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. We're just experimenting today with antennas. We got some more to test. I think it's kind of fun. I don't know about you, but it's kind of fun for me. Bye-bye.